everyone welcome back to Amy Reads. So today I am bringing you my January wrap-up. This is my first wrap-up on my channel. Um, I read seven books? Seven books, yeah, in the month of January and that includes one collection of comics. Uh, so without further ado, let's get to it. So today I am going to be bringing you my wrap-up in order of what I liked the least to what I liked the most. Now I just saw that Bookables did this and I know a lot of other booktubers do it as well. Uh, so I'm not going to go in order of how I read them. Uh, I'm going to go in order of what I liked the least. Now this month my ratings went from a 3.5 to a 5. So I didn't hate any of the books I read this month. Most of them were 4 star reviews which for me is a book that I really, really enjoyed. So I'm going to start with A.S. King's Still Life with Tornado. Now a lot of these books I don't have with me anymore because they were library books and I've already returned them. So you'll have to settle for the picture. Um, I enjoyed this book to an extent. I did give it three and a half stars. Uh, it didn't impress me as much as I thought that it would. Um, I've never read anything else by A.S. King and I guess I wasn't really sure what to expect. This is about a 16 year old girl named Sarah who starts seeing and communicating with other versions of herself like 10 year old Sarah and 41 year old Sarah I think and 23 year old Sarah. Um, her parents really hate each other. Uh, she has an, a much older brother, he's like nine or ten years older than her, who doesn't live in the home anymore and doesn't have contact with her family. So it's definitely like a family drama, um, but it's also got this, I don't even know what you would call it exactly, y'all can help me out. Um, this sort of thing going on where she sees these other versions of herself, it's not exactly fantasy, but I'm not sure the descriptor I would use for that. Um, it was a good book. I did enjoy it, but I think um, the reason I gave it a 3.5 is I just didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. At times, I think I really was just sick of the Sarah character, um, and I feel like the mystery, per se, of what was going on with her was just kind of lame. Sorry. Next on the list is Girls in the Moon by Janet McNally and I gave that four out of five stars. I won't go into too much detail about this because I do have a full review of this book and I will link that down below. Um, I really enjoyed this debut from Janet McNally. Um, it is about a young girl who comes from a very like rocker family. Both her parents were in a famous band in the 90s called Shelter and she has an older sister. Um, who lives in New York City and is sort of doing the music thing. She is not a musician in any form um, and she's really trying to kind of solve the mystery of why what happened with her parents um, and why they split up and why the band split up and why her father hasn't talked to her in three years. So she goes to New York City to visit her sister and sort of try to figure out this family mystery that no one will talk about. Um, I really did enjoy it. Like I said, you can check out my review that I will link down below where I talk more in depth about what I did and didn't like about it. Next up is a book I do actually still have. It is a library book, but I haven't returned it. And that is volume one of Faith, which is Hollywood and Vine. And I believe this is the first four comics in the Faith series by Valiant. Um, if you've watched some of my other videos, you may have noticed me saying that I am trying to get more into comics and graphic novels, or at least find ones that I'm interested in because I'm just really trying to kind of get more into that medium. There's so, so much out there. It's not all like the Avengers, which is fine and cool, but it's just not really my thing. So Faith, is, as you can tell, is a fat superhero. Um, and I actually had this book on my February TBR and then ended up reading it like the night of January 31st. So it actually made my January wrap up instead. So I've already talked about this book. I've already shown you the amazing back cover of this book. So I won't go into too much detail other than to say I did give it four out of five stars. Really loved it. The second volume is also out. It's called California Scheming. So I will definitely be reading that one. And I think there's a third volume that will be coming out sometime soon as well. So um, if you like kind of unconventional graphic novels, I would say go for this. Also, I love, love, love that she is like a legitimate fat person and her weight is never mentioned. Like it's never, it's not any kind of storyline, it's not any kind of plot point. Like her ex-boyfriend is this really like jacked guy. Like it had, I mean, it's just, I just love the way that they deal with that by basically like not dealing with it. Like she's just, not only is she a superhero, but she's just a normal person and I love that. 
Next up is Jenny Colgan's Welcome to Rosie Hopkins Sweet Shop of Dreams. This was the first book that I finished in 2016 and I gave it four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this book. It's a really good chiclet book that's got a little more going for it than I think a normal chiclet book. Um, it's about this woman who it has to go and take care of her great aunt who owned this sweet shop in this tiny little town in England and of course it's gone into disrepair as her great aunt has gotten older. Um, so she goes to kind of help her out, falls in love with running a sweet shop and everything. Um, she's supposed to go there to kind of fix it up and sell it and of course she ends up wanting to keep it and there might be some handsome fellows in the mix vying for her heart or whatever. Um, <laughs> that's kind of like a secondary story though. I like that it does flashback. Um, it has, you know, present day with Rosie and then it has her great aunt like back in the 40s. Um, you know, when it, it tells a story of her life and kind of why she is who she is and where she is in her life right now. So I really enjoyed that back and forth. I love a book that messes with, you know, goes back and forth in time and does some dual narration. I'm always a sucker for that. Next up is the only other book that I physically have with me today, and that is The Amateurs by Sarah Shepard. Um, this is my first Sarah Shepard book, and I think I talked about this in another video, but I can't remember anymore. I definitely posted about it on my Instagram and my Twitter. Um, I've never read any of the Pretty Little Liars books, but uh, this is her brand new book, as you know, and it's the beginning of a new series about some amateur sleuths uh, who kind of meet through this website called Case Not Closed where they sort of theorize about um, unsolved murders and, and cases and such like that. So uh, they all kind of come together to help this girl who, who sort of put out a feeler on this website um, and her sister died five, six, five or six years before. Um, she was missing for several years and then a couple years later she was found dead. So they go to kind of solve this for her. They each have their own issues that they're on case not closed. You know, they each have their own secrets. I really liked this book. Um, I kind of figured out, well, I sort of figured out kind of what was going on, but only like two thirds of the way through and I wasn't even completely correct about that. So um, I say it's a pretty well crafted mystery if you are into YA mysteries. Very very easy to read. Um, definitely I've watched like the first five seasons of the Pretty Little Liars show so it definitely has that feel to it. Um, I was enjoying this book and then the ending really kind of I was like oh oh okay. <laughs> so I did not see the ending coming and I was kind of wondering how they were going to set up for more of the series. And now I know. Uh, so the ending did take me for a little bit of a loop and I, that I did not see coming. Oh, I should have. So anyway, give it a read. Um, I really enjoyed it and I gave it four out of five stars. Next up is My Sister Rosa by Justine Larbalestier, I think. Uh, and I gave that four and a half out of five stars. I really, really enjoyed this book. I think the only reason that I knocked a half star off is I felt like the first part of it sort of drug for me. Once you got about halfway through, the last part really flies by. Um, it is about a boy named Che who is 16 from Australia. His family moves around a lot, sort of opening businesses and then leaving them. And um, he has a 10 year old sister named Rosa who is a psychopath, or at least he believes that she is a psychopath. Um, she just has exhibited a lot of behavior and he has sort of taken it upon himself to make sure that she doesn't hurt anyone or that no one hurts her. Um, so he's very conflicted because he loves his sister very much, but he also knows that she is dangerous and terrifying. So it is, it'll just kind of make you feel real unsettled. <laughs> so if you're into books like that, um, then definitely pick up My Sister Rosa. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm gonna, I know that Justine has a couple other books. I don't think that they're the same style. I haven't looked into them too much, um, but I'm definitely gonna go and read those now because I did love her writing style. So four and a half out of five stars for My Sister Rosa would definitely recommend that if you like. It's not scary, um, it's just unsettling because it's like there are really people out there who are psychopaths and who have no empathy and that's like a terrifying thing to know that we live in a world with people like that. So uh, if you enjoy books like that, I would definitely recommend it.
The last one that I read and that I gave five stars to is Phoebe Robinson's You Can't Touch My Hair and Other Things I Still Have to Explain. Again, I did a full review of that and I will link that down below so I won't talk too much about it. It did get five out of five stars for me. I laughed hysterically through that entire book. Um, I didn't know a whole lot about Phoebe Robinson before I started other than I knew that she did some podcasts. Um, one of them being So Many White Guys, produced by Alana Glazer. Um, so I knew about her, I knew that she was funny, but I just didn't know like to what extent. Um, I really, really loved this book. If you enjoy things that are hilarious and socially conscious and make you think about things and make you think about cultures that you are not familiar with and that you don't know a lot about, then I would definitely suggest Phoebe Robinson's first book. I'm really excited to see what she does next. Um, and again, I will link my full review of that down below. So that is everything that I read in the month of January. So what did you guys read? I know this is coming a little bit late into February and a lot of people, a lot of booktubers uh, have already been doing their January wrap up. So, but let me know what you read in the month of January. Was it more than you were hoping, less than you were hoping? Um, what was your favorite read and what was your least favorite read? So just pop that down in the comments below. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I'll be back soon with more book talk. Bye.